Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak, and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. My wife, Cindy, and I just got back from sailing for a couple months in the Virgin Islands, and it's just so good to be home. We're excited to be have our guest today, Jeff Joaquin, uh, who is uh, very active in the pro-life movement, and uh, we'll be talking story about that and about an upcoming big event in Tampa uh, taking place on the uh, weekend of the 10th. Uh, big men's conference that Jeff and I will both be at. So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife and I, Cindy, just got back. We spent a, a, a month uh, traveling. We went to Montana for two weeks, and we spoke to uh, about my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? We spoke on a lot of college campuses there. And it was interesting because one of the campuses, the the the, um, the president of the university and a lot of the professors were trying to shut down the talk just based on the, the title of the book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And um, we did speak, uh, but they first, someone got up and read something saying, uh, we don't necessarily agree with anything he's saying. And then a few professors stayed in the back, uh, women, uh, man haters, I would say, and just looking for something that I would do wrong. And really, uh, my message uh, on manliness is is very basic. It's that the word for man in Latin, there's two words actually. There's the word homo, lies in homo sapien, and then there's the word ver. Uh, a man, um, think about it this way, the word ver uh, come is the root word for man and also for the word virtue. And so when I challenge the men to live virtuous lives, like I think it's in First, first Corinthians, it says, uh, act like men. And, uh, and then it follows that little, that little challenge with saying, do everything you do in love. So, um, and then you have the word homo, which comes from the word humu, which means earth. And of course, Adam, his name, Adamo, it means, it means, uh, it means earth also. So I just, I just share, I just share this uh, on the college campuses that men are made out of mud. They're gritty. They're different than women. Uh, but so many of the things that are challenging men now to be manly are mostly about pull yourself up by the bootstraps, make a lot of money, and make yourself a high-value man. Well, we, you already are because you're, you're, you're made in the image of God. You know, you know how valuable you are as a human because God became a human. And then Jesus, not only that, he became man, and then he laid his life down for you. So you are, if the immortal, in, in, infinite, eternal God sees you as so valuable that he became man and they laid his life down for for you then you are already of incom incomparable value and so uh, men but men are being uh, uh, pushed two different directions one is just to just just to go into cruise control and be lazy and the other side is to you know you got to man up you got to do it on your own strength but the real message of the gospel is grit and grace you need to have the grit. You're made out of mud. You're made to be, you're made to uh, live a life of fortitude and to face a life of challenge. But you don't do that on your own. You do that, uh, you, you live that kind of a life because you have a relationship with God and he infuses in you the power of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, that's why I think it's so important too for men. You can't do this alone. You know, I used to have a cabin up in Montana and uh uh, when I first uh, struck out into that land, it was raw land before there was even a road. I saw a lone wolf the first time I walked into the land. And uh, and I, I got to talk to a professor f uh, in Montana six months later, and I, uh, he was a tracker because he tracks uh, ape, uh, uh, apex predators. And I said, you know about this wolf? He shows up on my land every now and then. I go, well, actually, it's probably his land. And he goes, I know that lone wolf. He's, he's a lone wolf. And I said, well, he looks angry, but he doesn't look very healthy. He goes, yeah, a lone wolf uh, isn't healthy. He's a formal, former alpha male that's been forced out of the pack by a younger male. And he no longer uh, is relevant to that pack. And he's going to die young. He's going to not eat well. He's gonna, he has to eat the leftovers after the pack moves on. And, uh, and uh, he's going to get diseased and die young. So you men, we need as men to gather together in brotherhood. 
we need to have the grit and the grace, but also the willingness to get together with other men and to be formed and informed by them and the Holy Spirit. And that's one of the reasons why we have Jeff Joaquin with us today, because he and I are going to be at the Tampa Bay uh, Suncoast, uh, the 14th annual San, uh, Suncoast uh, Tampa Bay uh, Catholic Men's Conference. Uh, Jeff Joaquin, I, I, when he sent me his bio, I was like, oh, wow. So he's with, he's been, he's been, he does, uh, has a documentary that's going to, Ben Bent was on EW10 last week. Uh, he's part, he's on the board of directors of the That Man Is You program, which is Paradisus Dei. And also on the, he's on the board of directors of the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance, which as you know, probably has, you may know, has the Heroic Men Outreach. And I'm, I'm, I, I was, I came to an event uh, uh, in Florida uh, years ago and got and became familiar with the that man is you program and all that's going on there that's where I've, i learned about that and so jeff joaquin welcome to the bear wastic adventure <laughs> thank you so much for having me bear it's a it's an honor and a privilege uh, you know what th this is it's really interesting because the first men's conference i ever went to was this men's conference uh, i i don't even know how i found out about it i was i lived in hawaii and i go and I never even heard of a Catholic men's conference, and I found out about this. So I probably came to this about 12 years ago, something like that. And so it's a really an honor to get to speak, to, to be a, the, the main speaker there, or one of the main speakers there at this event. But the thing that really struck me was that these men love each other, and they're committed. They're, you know, that, the way that everyone was flowing together, working and making it all happen. But these men loved the church, loved the Lord. And I said, why is that? And someone told me, because almost every one of these men are members of a That Man Is You chapter. And so we brought that to the bishop here. And we, have, we started a couple of um, That Man Is You chapters right here in Hawaii. So, uh, yeah. Tell, yeah, so great to be with yeah, you. I think, I, I think I know one of your brothers out there, Gary Okino. Yes. Uh, is, yeah, he Gary's a good friend of mine. He he actually um, reached out to us when they started the the men's conference in Hawaii, and we gave him some tips and some pointers. But you know your your intro uh, bear right on the money. You know let me let me tell you a little bit about myself um, as it relates to what you were saying. You know I was born and raised in Dartmouth, Massachusetts, to in a good Catholic Christian family. Um, you know, I got tied up into alcohol and drugs when I was younger, um, but I, I, you know, had a was pretty good at football. So I, I went off to college and played football in college. What, what position did you play? I played uh, outside linebacker. Yeah. I was going to yeah. call you. I, I was thinking defensive end, but you're outside. Line. So then you were you were both. You were the contained man in some plays. And sure. Yeah. The rush, the rush defensive end, trying to get as many sacks as possible. Yeah. You know? Take off the quarterback's head even after he throws back in sure. those days. Right. <laughs> So, so, yeah, you can't do that anymore, though. You can't touch the, no, the prima donnas. But, I, but, dude, that, that says everything about you. That personality that you have is why you're doing what you're doing today. You're the contained man. You're, you're, uh, you know, you're a defensive player that's on the offense. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I went into college, got into college, and, and became a two-time preseason All-American. And, wow. and actually got recruited by the Buffalo Bills. But... You know, my my uh, a, a few of my addiction problems prevented me mm. from doing that. Um, and the only reason I bring that up is, you know, before the age of 25, I thought a man meant that anytime somebody looked at you cross-eyed, that you were offended and, and wanted to take a, you know, physical uh, confrontation. But you know, the beautiful part is 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 um, as men, it's there's, there's kind of two things in the balance, right? You have St. Joseph on one side, meek, humble, leader of the Holy Family. And then you have St. Michael the Archangel on the other side, you know, the, you know, take up arms and, and go to battle. So it really bare wasn't up until probably 38 years old when I had my real conversion process. I fell hook, line and sinker into all of the things that you're talking about, how a man has to provide for his family. You know, I, I, uh, I had a tremendous amount of success in my 30s. I climbed the ladder of success and, and, and found out it was up against the wrong wall. Mm. Um, you know, I had the private jets. I had the, the luxury suite tickets to everything. But it was all a lie, really. It mm. was all a lie. And it's funny, at the age of 38, we went to church this one Sunday. 
and um, a, a man small in stature but a giant in faith, he walked up to the ambo, and he started talking about being an authentic Catholic man, hmm. you know, praying with your family, eating with your family, uh, sacrificing for your family. And, you know, Bear, I, I made the big mistake. I was with my wife and my, you know, probably seven or eight-year-old daughter at the time. I turned and looked to them just to see what their reaction was. And from my wife and from my daughter, I immediately recognized that I was not that father and I was not that husband that they needed me to be. So we're, talk we're talking with Jeff Joaquin, who is uh, one of the leaders of the Tampa Men's Conference. It's taking place at the 14th Annual Suncoast Catholic Men's Conference for Tampa Bay. Can you just tell us quickly where that is? And then we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about what you we want to hear more yeah. about your testimony. It's at Higgins Hall. St. Lawrence Parish off of uh, Hines Avenue in Tampa. And yeah, it's our 14th year and, and we're blessed to have you and Gus Lloyd join us as speakers. And Yes. And, uh, it should be a great event. I'm looking forward to it. We're talking with Jeff Joaquin. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I just want to let you know the feedback that we're getting on the book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has been really powerful. It's the most, po it's the most popular book that I've ever published. And it's inter or uh, Sophia Institute, actually, uh, that I ever wrote. Sophia Institute Press actually published it. Thank God they're, they're, my, they're the publisher for all my books. But um, it's so interesting because the fathers are wanting to read this with their sons. And, you know, it's really hard to have a conversation with, with your son about things that are really important. But as you read through this book, it's like they're reading it, but they're not in a hurry to get through it. But they may spend uh, two or three times a week or once a week with their sons and reading this book because it goes through these different areas of what it means to be a man. And, you know, from a Catholic and a Christian perspective, but some of these things are not really talked about. But it's more like what a father and a son or a brother to a brother would talk about, getting gritty, getting real. And so 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You can get it at Sophia. You can get it on EWTN. You can get it on Amazon. You can go to our, our website, deepadventure.com, and get it there too. But we're trying to get this into as many hands as we can. It's, it's, I love the book because it's all based on that cowboy 
uh, mystique. You know, there's there's uh, something about the the myth of the of the the Western, the cowboy of America that just kind of I don't know. It just get, does something to a man. You know, I was watching the guns of Navarone yesterday while I was doing some work. I had it on in the background. But the day before that, I had a Clint Eastwood movie on. And, you know, it's just part of that. There's just something about that that encourages a man. And so we have such a man like that with us today. Uh, Jeff Joaquin is here with us. He's one of the leaders of um, the CMLA, the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance, and Paradisi's Day. That brings us that man is you. He's on the board of directors of the, the 14th Annual Suncoast Catholic Men's Conference for the Tampa Bay area. And so, Jeff, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Bear. Good to see you again. The biggest mystery that we had to deal with when we first met was in a town in Massachusetts. How do you say the name of that town? Yeah, it's it's called, it's it looks like Worcester, <laughs> but it's actually pronounced Worcester. Yeah, and, they, and, uh, and yeah. believe it or not, uh, Bear, I went to school in Worcester, Massachusetts. But you say Worcester. Yeah, Worcester. You say Worcester with an R at the end. Yeah, Worcester. And yeah. some people say Worcester. Worcester, yeah. That, people it's from Worcester, New England will Worcester. Say Worcester. And then sure. people go, oh, it's easy. It's just like you say that 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 steak sauce. And I, go, I can't pronounce that word either. Yeah, uh, yeah, neither can I. But this is so cool. So you, you, uh, you. Obviously, there's a lot of virtue involved usually when you're as successful as you have been and you had been in your in your college life and football and then on into um, into your uh, your career. But there was you said there were certain addictions and there just wasn't you weren't bringing it as far as what your your, your wife and your family needed. And you had this moment, this epiphany while you were at mass, I think you said. Right. And someone was yeah. sharing. So yeah. we, we want to hear all about that. We want to get take time and really get to know about that. Yeah, you know, it. it um, when I looked at my wife and my daughter, and they looked at me, and they they essentially let me know that I wasn't the husband and the father that I needed to be. So it. it, it um, I started my involvement in the That Man Is You program, which really led there to uh, the general confession, which which um, you know really changed my life. And and at that time, I had gotten a spiritual director. And I didn't really know what a general confession was, but he gave me the books and he taught me how to unpack the my sinful past. And you know, so I had 38 years there of of, um, of peeling back the onion, if you will. Mm. And uh, and uh, it was a it was a an experience of humility. You know, it mm. was the first time in my life that I got a dose of God's humility because um, I had to recognize myself for who I was, a sinful, broken, wounded man. See, I had a case of the imposter syndrome, right? To mm. everybody out there in the world, it was, this is the successful business owner, um, successful ministry guy. Um, but behind all that, there was brokenness. So, you know, I went in there and did that general confession. It took about an hour and a half. And in about an hour and 15 minutes into it there, I had to I had to confess to the God of the universe that I had taken the life of my unborn son in the womb mm. all the way back at the age of 17. And and I tell you, it, it I broke down. The priest was was crying. And and then when he got out of the confessional bear, he, he walked over to me. He wrapped his arms around me and he said, welcome home, son. Mm. You know, and so I spent 38 years running from the hound of heaven doing every I broke every commandment, all 10 of them by the age of 17. Yes, including the fifth one. Mm. But all it took was for me to get down on my knees and be humble and contrite and ask, ask the Lord for forgiveness and in, in, in an instant there, boom, he forgave me for 38 years worth of sin. So that was a real transformational part of, of my conversion process. And, and so, uh, I, yeah, so, again, it wasn't the big, tough, you know, six foot three, 260 pound guy that got that, that got that healing. It was the guy who recognized that he's dust and onto dust till he shall return. And until I figured that out, and, and grew in humility, I, I was I was in my own prison. It's in my own prison. Yeah, you know the um, there's people listening right now that that heard what you had to say 
um, and are recognizing that that man is you, just like the just like the program says. Um, the, uh, the that man is you program that you helped, you're helping to uh, lead in your area. Um, so many men that I've talked to, their moment of conversion was going to confession of reconversion, whether it was. Uh, uh, Eric, who started the Catholic Crossbearers motorcycle, Eric Wardrum, when he was in prison, he uh, gave his confession, and and suddenly everything changed. Um, so there's people listening right now that haven't been to confession in a long time, and they all, they almost feel like they, they don't even know where to start. Sure. The priest will help you go through that, um, but you know you know what it's like is like the first time I went uh, skydiving. Well, anytime I go skydiving, I'm scared. Um, and that's what, like, I know it's weird, but that's like what going to confession is like for me. You know, like, I, I don't want to talk to another human and reveal my soul, but I know that that person's in persona Christi, that it's Jesus I'm speaking to. But one time I took my son skydiving, um, and uh, we were on the plane, and there was like a dozen of us in this plane. And when you when they put that, when, when you're, you're standing in line, just like you're standing in line to confession, you know, and you get more and more trepidatious as you're getting closer to that door. And we got to the point where the plane was almost emptied out and there was three of us left, but they had to circle back to the jump zone. And, and, and so there was three of us left and one of the men in that plane lost his bowels. The one that was left, he was so freaked out that he didn't jump. And so many men right now are living in their own fecal matter right now. You know, they're living in their own whatever. And they're, and they're, they're trepidatious about going to confession. But when my son jumped out and then I jumped out after him, we got to hang out together. It was his first jump. So I caught up with him. We hung out together uh, in the sky. When you, after you go to confession, after you had that experience, didn't you feel like when you're dropping through, through the air, they say you don't even need to breathe for that first you know, 6,000 feet because the oxygen's coming in. Don't you feel like when you're, when you go to confession, there's pure oxygen flowing into your soul and afterwards you feel like you can conquer the world. You feel the sense of peace and that everything is integrated and just right. Yeah, yeah I tell you, it, um, I was blessed last week. I had two events last week. I did a, a, a talk on mercy at a local parish in, in Tampa, Florida. And I was blessed to go up and speak at the March for Life. Um, yes. Right behind, right yeah. behind Bar B Bishop Strickland and Frank Pavone and Alveda King. Right behind them, I, I was blessed to speak. And anytime I do those kind of events there, I always make sure I go to confession. And I have to tell you this story. So last Tuesday, I went to St. Paul's where I go to daily mass. And I was in line in the confessional. And there was a man, two people in front of me. He's probably in his early 30s, I'd say early to mid 30s. And he had his four-year-old son with him there. And I tell you, I looked at him and I said, if I could ever be that good of an example to my daughter, I have a 21-year-old daughter. If I could ever be a, that good of an example to my daughter, as this man is to his little son because the man walked into the confessional and the confessional door has uh, like a window in it so that little four-year-old boy had his face pressed up against mm. the window mm. as his father was going to confession mm. and men we it, it, it going to confession is never easy i go to confession once a week now not because i think i'm good but because i know i'm bad and I still get fear and trepidation as I go to confession. But I know, just like what happened at the age of 38, I can bring a truckload of garbage into the confessional. And immediately the hound of heaven forgives us. And, and you walk out of that room bare, like you said, floating on cloud nine. It's like you just, it's like you just dumped 500 pounds of garbage. And no one's judging you, no one's condemning you, no one's saying, hey, look at Jeff, he's in the line for the confessional again. I welcome them. So I, mm. men, men and women who, listen, it's we a, got, it's we, a, we, we got to take a break, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry about that, stepping on that. But yeah, we need, our, we need for you to um, 
hear what Jeff is saying. And uh, if you haven't been to confession lately, you need to uh, consider going. We're, we're talking with Jeff Joaquin. This is the Bear Wasik Adventure. We'll be right back with more. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Humility. Lots of folks equate humility with weakness. True, there is false humility, which can be just another name for downright cowardliness or shiftiness. But true humility takes a unique sort of courage, takes self-control. In fact, in the original language of the New Testament, the base word for humility means controlled strength. It goes like this. I have the right and the power to enforce being bright, but I choose to be otherwise. Takes real restraint, especially when emotions get revved up. I've learned for the most part to tame reacting to my emotions. The hardest for me is to exercise restraint when I see a bully in operation, like giving a waitress ill treatment. Gets my dander up serious bad. Now stop and consider how God did it. The all-powerful, present, everywhere, and all-knowing God chose to come to us in the form of a frail human body that got tired, got hungry, and sweated drops of blood, even allowing himself to be beaten and pinned to a cross, when he could have called legions of angels to his rescue. Had to tell his boys who wanted to call down fire from heaven that fire and destruction were not the way to respond when having a sense of being wronged. The rugged John the Baptist, you know, he was a true warrior, had a warrior spirit. Yet John the Baptist said of Jesus, he must increase, and then of himself, I must decrease. Not many of us willing to sacrifice our power and position. It takes a real man to be humble. It takes sacrifice, self-restraint, and courage. In God's economy, humility is hot, and unbridled pride and passion are not. This is Dan LeBoon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos, Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, we're talking with Jeff Joaquin. He's one of the, on the board of the directors of the That Man Is You, Paradisis Dei, Dei organization and the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance to bring you heroic men and he's on the board of directors for the group that brings you the, the big event we're both going to be at this, this uh, coming weekend in Tampa. What is the event and where is it? Yeah, it's uh, February 10th. Um, starts at 6.30 in the morning with the rosary. It's at Higgins Hall, which is located on St. Lawrence Parish in the Diocese of St. Petersburg. So we're happy to have you and, and Gus uh, Lloyd with us. And it'll be a great opportunity to help uh, men understand what uh, Catholic manliness is all about. Yeah, manliness. Yeah. I remember when we first talked to the leaders there, they go, we're going to call it Catholic masculinity. And I said that I'm not going to come. <laughs> Let's just tell it like it is. It's about sure. it's about manliness. But um, we were speaking of manliness. My new book, Twelve Rules for Manliness, 
Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is what went all the way to number five in uh, Christian men's uh, books. So it, it's receiving a real wide audience, not just among Catholics, but among Christians and even non-Christians. So if you haven't got a copy of it, I would get a copy. I would get two, one for you and one to give to a friend or to ha- give to your son to read through with him. But, you know, you were, t- you were talking about the hound of heaven. Um, how Jesus is considered the hound of heaven. There's there's an Old Testament scripture verse. This is for, we're talking to this the man now, women too. But there are men that are, are still running, to, running from God. They want to do it on their own. They want to be able to clean up their life and get it all done on their own, or they just don't want to bother. But with Jesus, it's a come-as-you-are party. You know, God, Jesus paid the ultimate price, to help you to become free because he loves you. But there's an Old Testament scripture verse. Are you familiar with the one where the, it's an example of a man who's running from a lion? And it's nip and tuck, mostly nip. And he finally gets inside his house and he slams the door just in time. And then he leans up against the wall and up above the, the ceiling is a snake, a hissing snake. This is a picture of the hound of heaven, but it's not. There's, there's an image I, I heard once of a man that was petting a cat. And the cat was hissing, you know, when his back was rising as he would pet him. And the cat just hated it. And sometimes God's love is like that. We, he's, he's loving us, but it makes us feel terrible. And this, this man that's petting this cat was petting against the grain. Mm. And the man just kept saying, turn around, cat. It's like when, when God confronted Paul, how, how, how long are you going to kick against the goat? How are you going to go against the grain? How long are you going to go your way? instead of the way that you are made for, you know, your, your personal telos. So those of you who, are, who are, feel like they're kind of stuck, um, turn around. Yeah, you know, the amazing part there is, I believe that there are four pillars of mercy, right? We're talking about uh, confession, which is God forgiving us. That's the vertical part of the cross. Once we get into a, in a proper routine of doing that, then it's the second pillar of mercy, which is man forgiving his fellow man, woman forgiving their fellow woman. Once you can receive mercy from God, then you're able to distribute it that much easier to your fellow man. But then really, uh, there, I think there's two more pillars of mercy, right? The third pillar of mercy is forgiving yourself. You know, mm-hmm. I still have to forgive myself for taking the life of an, my unborn child in the womb when I was 17 years old. I know God has forgiven me 100% for that, but there's still pain, there's still sorrow that's associated with it. So we have to let God forgive us, which then opens up the, the, the opportunity for us to forgive others. And then we have to forgive ourselves and then last but not least, sometimes, you know, and, and great tragedy happens in everybody's life. But just because God's will in our life and our will conflicted with each other and something really bad happened, that doesn't mean we need to blame God for it. Yes, you know? yes. So, so it, it's all about mercy. It, it, it's a, it's a, I don't think I have met more than a handful of men in my journey the last 18 years in men's ministry that really, really understands God's mercy and his love for us. And mm. we, we almost feel that we're not worthy, that yeah. we're, we, we're broken and we're yes. ashamed. But hey, listen, it, it's, that's, he, it's the spiritual etch-a-sketch, right? You walk into the confessional with all kinds of sins on your etch-a-sketch. And then the priest in persona Christi takes that etch-a-sketch and he shakes it up and he said, okay, you are born new, son. Go out and be a disciple of Jesus. And, and I mean, where else can you go and get that kind of free car wash bear? You tell me. Yeah, but it's you know, free. Yeah, you, you know, know, some people say Christianity is brainwashing. Well, maybe your brain needs a good scrubbing, you know. And I, sure. th- I'm so glad you said this because uh, I wrote about this in my first book, Sur- A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, which is really about Carmelite spirituality. but. Um, it, it, but it's basically kind of talking about a surfer's experiences. But there was a time, this fifth, fourth pillar, I never hear, hear anybody talk about that, but there was a time when I was pedaling my bicycle from San Diego, California, to Jacksonville, Florida. 
And the first hour, the first day was like straight up hill on the coastal mountains. Then I, then you go along and then you're going down this long run and now you're into the desert. Mm -hmm. And the desert was so hot that the pavement was sticking to the bottom of my tires. So I had to stop, I couldn't pedal. I had to wait and start pedaling at night. So I started pedaling, this was I think on the third day and I was pedaling, and which doesn't seem like it was, you know, it took me 25 days, I think, to get across. So it was early on, but still pedaling for that long. Well, kind of, it kind of, it kind of like grinds you to a point of, of, of openness. And I was pedaling at night on a side road under the stars that were so brilliant. And uh, it was like the stars were just falling into my heart. And I just heard, I, I broke down and cried. I'd been through a divorce, you know, my broken marriage. Um, so sad for my children, mostly. But, and angry. Like, why did this happen? And I didn't realize it, but I was holding a grudge against God, just like you said. Sure. And I, without, sure. without even thinking about it, I just said, I forgive you, God. Yeah. You need to forgive God and not hold it against Him. You know, I know what I have in store for you, plans for peace, not destruction, a future reserved for you, full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me, if you seek me with all your heart. So this is so critical. I, I wish you would talk a little bit more uh, uh, about that, 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 that when the gravest things happen in our lives. Let me give you two examples of that there, okay? Um, I have a friend local to Central Florida, okay? He and his wife have had nine pregnancies. I'm going to give you a compare and contrast. Two real quick stories, compare and contrast. Nine pregnancies, okay? Only two of them have resulted in actual live births. Seven, seven other pregnancies have ended either in miscarriage or a stillbirth, okay? And I tell you the story about the stillbirth. One week before they were going to deliver, okay? The mother got an infection. The infection went to the baby's heart. The baby passed away, literally a handful of days before they were gonna give birth. They gave birth to this child. Obviously the child was dead. But when, when talking with that man, you, I, I asked him, I said, listen, how much did you hate God after that happened? How much did you hate him? And he said, Jeff, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I, I love God immensely, but it took about a year or so before I could forgive him. I, I had to forgive God for having my wife deliver an unborn child. So that man turned back to God there as a way to get consolation from that, mm. you know, incredible loss. I mean, seven pregnancies that resulted in loss. So that particular man turned back to God, forgave him for it, mm. and now he's at peace. Mm. The other well, side of that coin is another man that I worked with there um, back about 20 years ago. And one Saturday morning, he was in a rush. He ran out the front door, grabbed his keys, jumped in his truck, uh, hit reverse, and he backed up. And all of a sudden, he felt a, a bump bump. He had run over something. And he got out of his truck, walked to the back of his car, and he saw the unthinkable. He thought he had backed over his son's toy or his, or his uh, uh, roller skates or something. And he had backed up over his five-year-old son and killed him. Mm. Unthinkable tragedy, Bear, you know? And that particular man, Bear, and for the last 20 years, he's had 50, he, had, he got a divorce from his wife because of this situation. They were never able to have any more children. And this poor man for the last 20 years, He's had 15 jobs in 22 different countries. He's running from the hound of heaven, and he doesn't realize all he has to do is stop long enough, and God will he'll he'll reconcile with him. So, mm -hmm. I, I, and that man to this day hates God, hates him. He blames God because of what happened. So mm -hmm. you it's a you have a choice, right? You have a choice. Deuteronomy 30. Chapter 30, verse 17, I put before you life and death, so choose life. Amen. You know, the first man chose life. You, you know, reunite, you reuniting himself with God. The second man, unfortunately, 
he's he still hates God. He can't forgive God for the tragedy that happened in his life. No, we we got to take a break. Lord, we pray for that man right now. All of the strength of all the people that are listening right now, we pray that he would have a breakthrough. We're talking with Jeff Joaquin. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My co-adventure guide today is Jeff Joaquin. I want to encourage everybody to, to, um, to man, my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? It's so good. I really like it. You know, you spend a lot of time writing a book, and then it goes to the publisher, and then you pick it up, and you get to read it, and go, wow, how did I say that? How, where did that came, come from? But it's so cool because I use a lot of Louis L'Amour uh, quotes. He's the great Western novelist and, and quotes from John Wayne and other, other cowboys. And then we integrate that with the, with the early church fathers who, are, by the way, were real cowboys. And, uh, and, uh, and, we, and we, we shed a new light. It's a new way of looking at what manliness is and what the virtues are. So we invite you to go to, to our website, deepadventure.com, and join Bear School of Manliness and the Man Cave or, or, or get that book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? We're talking with Jeff Joaquin. What's the, what's the uh, big event we've got going on in Tampa next this weekend? So February 10th, 6.30 in the morning, we'll start off with the rosary. We've got mass at um, uh, 8 o'clock, and we've got adoration all day, and we've got Bear Wozniak and Gus Lloyd, um, Higgins Hall, St. Lawrence Parish, Tampa, <laughs> Florida. We're looking forward to it and giving men an opportunity, a permission slip, if you will, to come out of the darkness and into the light. Let me let me tell you something about that event. The first time I showed up, I showed up with Jamie Dernzopolsky. You probably know Jamie. I do. I do. <clears throat> and I, I'm introduced to, uh, on the way there, I was on the plane, and I was reading a book by a, a pastor here in Hawaii, and he talked about how the God will give you a vision, he'll give you a dream. And he was raised in Japan, and they have a tradition there. I don't remember where it is exactly, but they go up on a mountain, <clears throat> And they, they bring a bird and they let that bird fly. And it represents their dreams and their hopes in life. And so I'd heard that e- example. And while I was flying to, to Florida, this was the first time ever going to any sort of Catholic men's event for me. Flew all the way from Hawaii to come. And I'm reading this book and I'm writing down my thoughts and my dreams, uh, which were about radio, which was about TV, which is about speaking it, you know, you know, all that's happened to me now. God had given me that vision. So Jamie and I walk in the door there. This is how powerful the Holy Spirit is at this event. Walk in the door. And the first thing is Jamie introduces me to a priest. I don't know who it was. 
And the priest goes, uh, Jamie, there's, uh, there's beverages and coffee over here. And he looks at me and goes, and Bear, there's confession going on over here. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, then, I, then Jamie shared with him a little bit about what God had been giving me, because Jamie had me do five-minute segments once a week on his radio show there, Spirit, Spirit uh, FM. Spirit FM, yeah. And you know what the priest said to me when I shared with him just for a few moments about what the vision was? He just said, well, you got to let that bird fly. Ooh, wow. And that and that's that's a lot about you know the gifts and God God has a a purpose for you men. God has a, a God has a uh, uh, God God isn't finished with you yet. Don't think that you've been left behind. Uh, God says, I know what I have in store for you: plans for peace, not destruction. So there's God actually has a plan for you. It's the way He wired you and the way He made you. But you got to let that bird fly. When Cindy and I were were sailing on our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean this last month or, or two, there's a scripture verse that came to our my heart that Jesus said, "Those that are led by the Spirit of God are like the wind; they go where they don't know where they're coming from or where they're going to." Men and women, you got to let that bird fly. You got to let that that bird take flight and get the wings the wings spread out and the the the, the breath of the Holy Spirit to lift you. Let me tell you a quick story in that regard. There, it um, I'm I'm blessed. I, I spoke, uh, I think, three different sessions for the That Man Is You program. Uh, two in year seven and one in year eight. In uh, local to Florida, a lot of times there are a bunch of That Man Is You parishes, forty or fifty of them. I'll get asked by a local parish in central Central Florida to come and give a talk. Right, the live talk. Instead of watching it on a video, the, you know, I can come in and give the talk for them. So I did it at this local parish, West Central Florida, a, a year ago. And then I went back here this past October. And the man that was introducing me this time said, how do you want to be introduced? And I said, hey, listen, I don't care about that bio stuff. It means nothing. People taking credit for what God does in their lives. I said, introduce me as husband, father, business owner and sinner. That's all I want. So this particular gentleman who happens to be a retired colonel in the Marine Corps, retired colonel in the Marine Corps, he introduces me that way. And then he turns to me and he says, and there's about 250 people there. He said, now I want to embarrass Jeff. He said, because of listening, listening to his talk last year about his struggles with pornography, I've entered into rehab and I'm 340 days sober, right? Hmm. And, and why did I bring that story up there? After that, that morning, I've connected with this particular gentleman and, and we've developed a relationship. And he said, Jeff, he said, you know, the hardest part for me was I'm a colonel in the Marines. Mar it's all about self-control. It's all about um, discipline and management. And, and that was the outward representation that I would make to everybody, kind of that imposter syndrome. Yes. But deep down, deep down inside, I couldn't control myself in front of the computer on the phone. And he said, it wasn't until I learned to forgive myself mm -hmm. and set myself free from my lack of self-control that I was able to go to Jesus and get his healing. So it's amazing how when we share, Father Henry Nowen says in his book, Wounded Healer, Wounded Healer, he says, in our woundedness, we can be a source of life for others. It's right on the cover of the book. It's not as good as your book, Bear, but it's close. <laughs> but it, it, in our woundedness, Bear, what, men, what, what I've seen in the last three or four years traveling this country, speaking at men's conferences, retreats and whatnot, when I share my woundedness, Bear, that's when it's almost like a permission slip for that guy. I'll never forget the 82 year old man in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Bear. I told my story. I, part of that is an abortion at 17. That 82 year old man hit me harder than any fullback ever hit me after that talk. And he pinned me up against the wall and he said, I cannot believe that God could forgive a man like me. I had an abortion 60 years before, and I looked him right in the eyes and I said, brother, you have to set yourself free from that. You know, it's, it's almost like 
um, Bob Marley's, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. That's what we have to start doing as men. That man mm. went to confession, and in an instant, he was forgiven for something that burdened them for 60 years there. We're going you know full, I mean? We've come back full circle at the end of this time that we have together, and it's going back to that, that sacramental experience. Uh, I think men really it's tough for us to, to get real and to get humble like that, to get gritty like that. But men, more than anyone, need that connection in the confessional uh, with, that, with the priest and to, and to just open up your heart before God and before man. Because, you know, when you, when you sin, you do sin not just before God. You sin before, you're sinning against men, too. Any sin you do affects the world. It infe- and it's an infection. So there's a vertical, like you said, with the Lord, and then there's the horizontal, and that happens in the confessional. And then there's the integration of your own soul. When everything is healed, there's that integration, and and the priest can so much help you. So those of you who are listening to this story with Jeff Joaquin, uh, we encourage you to to uh, make uh, go and make a good confession. Jeff, where can they find you, and where what tell them about the event coming up in Tampa? Yeah, uh, February 10th, uh, Higgins Hall at St. Lawrence Parish. Um, uh, you, Bear Wozniak, and Gus Lloyd, uh, it's, it's going to be a great event. We have three breakout sessions, so not only is it your talk and Gus's talk, but we have three other breakout talks, one of which you'll give, and we have uh, a deacon um, and a priest that will give the other breakout sessions. So it, it's going to be a great event. 6.30 a.m., uh, right? 6.30 a.m. 6.30 a.m., <laughs> praying the rosary, the weapon Amen. of our times. What rosary so. is that? Is that... Is that um... Just one the warrior rosary jerusalem oh let me see oh it's beautiful yeah, to jerusalem uh, uh praise god yep the weapon yep. well we got to go jeff i'm so glad i got to know you more than just saying hi to you when we were speaking in worcester worcester worcestershire wherever that yeah. was uh yeah. last year in the cold freezing winter this year we get to be in tampa till next week may the breath of the holy spirit aloha you aloha Thanks for listening to the Bear Wasting Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wasting Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.